All right, kids, wake up. Cartoons are over. No more Bugs, no more Porky, no more Roadrunner, and no more Ninja Turtles. Real live action, real live people playing a real live game. We're talking college hoops, we're talking SCC, we're talking Auburn, we're talking South Carolina. We're talking in your face, talking trash until you smell their garlic breath and you can't stand it any longer. You heard of Chuck Person, loudmouth in the NBA, never shuts up because he can back it up? Check out his baby brother, Wesley. He's taking it to the rack, he's swatting it to the seats, he's pounding the boards, he's popping the J. He's talking the talk, he's walking the walk. What about South Carolina? You know what a game cock is? A game cock's a bird that's fighting mad. Everybody's mad here, coach is mad, fans are mad, even the mascot's mad. They lost a hell of a lot of games last year, but they're paying people back this year. Ready for some payback? I think you hear me knocking and I'm coming in. And I'm bringing Terry Holland, a big old rusty TV truck, and the whole damn ESPN crew with me. Good afternoon and welcome to the Frank McGuire Arena on the campus of South Carolina, where this afternoon the Gamecocks playing host to the Auburn Tigers as East meets West in the SEC. Two teams that have arrived at the same level of play, which is great news for South Carolina. Bad news if you're an Auburn Tiger fan. Hello once again, I'm Dan Patrick. Joining me, the former Virginia head coach, Terry Holland. I mentioned South Carolina. They're thrilled with their play. Nobody expected anything out of them. As for Auburn, they were picked to win the West. They've been a major disappointment. Their head coach, Tommy Joe Eagle, says, I'm baffled with my team's play. Well, of course, high expectations. They had four returning starters who actually averaged in double figures last year, led by Wesley Person, who's having a tremendous year statistically. He's in the top six in scoring, rebounding, assists, field goal percentage and free throw percentage in the Southeastern Conference. But that's been the problem with Auburn. They've played well statistically, but they haven't made the big plays to win the games. As for South Carolina, picked to finish last in the East, but no real big stars. Everybody seems to be playing well as a team. It's a great team effort. The returning players are giving them solid leadership. Incoming players like Emmett Hall are having a fantastic season. His play in these last seven games has helped them turn this season around. Emmett Hall and the Gamecocks ready to play host to the Auburn Tigers. We'll be back with the opening tip-off from the Frank McGuire Arena right after this. Have you seen the pictures of my new house? Mm. Get two words for you, pal. Dry rot. Is it me or is the porch kind of... Hey, look, it's time for lunch. I think my house just ate my lunch. Buy a house, start living in McDonald's. <laughs> If you're a little strapped for cash, get a whole lot of the food you love for lunch in a McDonald's Extra Value Meal. What you want is what you get. Ever done any tuck pointing, Randy? Uh, McDonald's today. I feel Dental X tingling on this side. Nothing on the head and shoulder side. I love that tingle, so I tried Dental X for my dandruff. It really came through. The flaking stopped, my scalp doesn't itch. Dental X with conditioner is the serious dandruff shampoo. I've switched to Dental X. <laughs> Pro quarterback Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain relieving rub fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast odor free relief. Cream or lotion. Sports Cream sure gets my vote for fast relief and no odor. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered the five-minute hair coloring. The revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just for Men. There's one battery that backs you with free jump start service anywhere for any reason. Die Hard. I can't believe I left my lights on. Sears Die Hard. The battery you can count on to give you more power when you need it most. Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina, the Frank McGuire Arena. Legendary figure, great coach here at South Carolina. 25 years ago, these two teams opened up this building. Frank McGuire. Head coach at South Carolina from 1965 through 1980. Also coached at North Carolina. Perhaps the biggest win of his career when he beat Will Chamberlain in the triple overtime NCAA title game back in the 50s. The Auburn Tigers come in at 5-5, five and five, but more importantly, they're 0-3 in SEC play. Ronnie Battle, the sixth all-time leading scorer for the Tigers, played in 97 consecutive games for Tommy Joe Eagles. 
Eagles in his fourth year at Auburn. Hasn't had a winning season here with the Tigers yet. Had a legendary career at Louisiana Tech, a school that he graduated from in 1971. As for the Gamecocks, who come in at 6-6, six and six, and more importantly, 2-1 and one in SEC play, Jamie Watson, great athlete, great leaper, not a great shooter, but still, he's their leading scorer at 14 points a game. It's a very balanced attack right now for Steve Newton. Newton in his second year at USC. He was at Murray State for six years prior to that, a graduate of Indiana State, 1963. Your officials, Kevin Fair, Max Chauvin, and Wally Tanner. Well, these two teams are very similar, Dan. They both play man-to-man -man defense almost exclusively. They'll change up a little bit on the at the defensive end. Tommy Joe Eagles, as you said earlier, was baffled by his team's play because they played extremely well at times. They put good statistics on the board, but they're not winning games. Tommy Joe Eagles says he likes to kid people. They think he's Indian, or at least part Indian. He says it never fails. Somebody comes up to me every place I go, and they say, well, what, what tribe are you with? his tribe so now he's been saying Sioux Cherokee he's no more Indian than we are both of these teams not big I think you have a couple of guys who are 6'8 six, 6'9 six, but for the most part they are not big college teams and they're not three-point shooting teams either and that is one of the problems their defense needs to create some easy scoring opportunities for both teams This is Watson. When he came out of high school, people said that he had leaping ability like Michael Jordan. He just didn't shoot as well as Michael Jordan when he got to college. That's been a problem. He's been bothered by a knee, but still a talented ball player. Wesley Person, the two of probably many for him. He comes in averaging about 18 points a game. He will do everything. Well, one of the things that Auburn is doing here is they're picking up full court. It'll be a full court man-to-man -man defense here. No traps, probably, just trying to make South Carolina use up some time to get the ball up the court, give them a chance to make a mistake, not try to force a mistake. South Carolina has a very deep bench. You will see a lot of players today. As for Auburn, they only have 10 scholarship players. Well, you can tell that Jamie Watson's playing with a lot more confidence than he did as a freshman. Had a, a pretty good season last year as a sophomore, but really coming into his own this year. Aaron Swinson misses. Wiley records the rebound. Ronnie Battle loses control. He's the kind of guy that goes in spurts. He's somebody who will make some fantastic plays, and his coach says other times he will disappear. Chris Lesso is starting today. He had food poisoning, didn't practice yesterday. Well, I think that's simply because Steve Newton wanted to start the same lineup that had been playing so well in recent games. Kerry Rich with the miss. We're going to give it to Auburn. South Carolina doesn't get too much scoring out of their backcourt. They don't expect too much. You can't let him have easy shots. West person to follow up. The rejection by Emmett Hall. Yeah, definitely on the way up. Great move by Person. He is an outstanding player. He reminds me a lot of Danny Manning. Not quite as tall, but he plays every position on the perimeter. And he's also going inside and rebounding. He also looks like him, facially. He's a little bit smaller than Danny Manning and very similar in what he gives his team. Wiley with a great post defense. Off Bynum's foot, it'll stay with the Auburn Tigers. Great job by Auburn defensively there. They had a man in front and a man behind. They're reacting very well to the penetration of the ball on the pass. Not so well on the dribble. Jamie Watson able to penetrate twice against him. Reggie Gallon, West Person, and it counts. 
Well, South Carolina was in the zone on the out-of-bounds underneath then, and they lost track of person, and he's the kind of player you have to know where he is no matter what defense you're in, and he slid into the crease and found the open area, ends up with an opportunity for a three-point play, and he is a great free-throw shooter in addition to his other skills. The first question he always gets is, are you like your brother Chuck? He's very quiet, soft-spoken, but like Chuck, will probably be an NBA player. Person gives Auburn a three-point lead. Played a little more than two and a half minutes at the Frank McGuire Arena. Dan Patrick along with Terry Holland. Emmett Hall with the miss. Lesso keeps it alive. Well, you can tell Hall was bothered by that swarming Auburn defense. They're all over the place inside. The lob into Hall. They're going to call the offensive foul. They say that he had possession. And once you have possession, the defender does not have to give you any room at all. But he does have to give you room to come down. Let's get a look at this one. That's a tough call here. I believe he's in the air when the defender establishes position. As a coach, would you have argued for that call? <laughs> We'd love to get it. Particularly playing on the road. Something Auburn has had problems with lately. They've not won a road game this year in the SEC. They're going to get Kerry Rich for the reach in on Reggie Gallon. As you say, South Carolina does not expect a lot of scoring from Kerry Rich, but he is second in the league in assists, having an excellent year handling the basketball, and he also is on pace to break Barry Manning's steals record. Reggie Gra Gallon with the uh, quick first step, getting by Rich. Ronnie Battle. Wiley keeps it alive. Wiley again. Lesso brings it down. They're going to get him for traveling. Wiley is such an active player. He's always around the basketball, gets his hands on the ball, keeps it alive, and good things tend to happen when he's in the game, and that's why Tommy Joe Eagles has him in the starting lineup. Third turnover for the Gamecocks. Wiley has really been a pleasant surprise for uh, Auburn right now because he's coming back from knee problems, and he's somebody who just enjoys playing. He really has a great deal of uh, fun when he's out there, and he loves to bang the boards. He'll do the dirty work for you, which is something they've needed. West Person again. It's going to be a long afternoon if they continue to let West Person shoot, Jerry. Well, you, again, you just have to find him, and again, they were in the zone that time, and Person ran the baseline, found the open area for the three-pointer. Fans wanted a foul on Gallon, who was banging Rich. Bynum. Terry Bynum. Rich controls the turnover. Bynum again. Hall tries to keep it alive. Steve Newton wants to talk it over. We'll be back after this. Get your little behinds in there. All over the world, there's a ritual that takes place right before bedtime. Okay. And don't forget to wash behind your ears. And for over 35 years, one faucet has helped more kids get away with it. And you two better be clean. Or not. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Yeah, how far away do you think I can get in 72 hours? I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget for the right car at the right price. Call your travel consultant or budget. The smart money is on budget. Nobody can do fish like we do. Nobody can do sugar like we do. Nobody can do shrimp like we do. Hell, hell. You're gonna get your wish. Go fish. 
You know, I enjoy performing, but I also enjoy working out. That's why I go to General Nutrition Centers and get Cybergenics Phase 1. You get a training tape and a manual, plus five state-of-the-art supplements. Hey, if this guy can do it, you can do it. Get Cybergenics at GNC. At the cage at UMass, the Minutemen running away from GW early. Mike Williams steps in, makes the steal, and the layup. It's all UMass in the early going. Back to uh, Dennis Leary, I mean Dan Patrick and Terry Holland. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Fallon. Auburn doing a great job defensively. It's tough to play against two guys inside. Aubrey Wiley in front. Aaron Swenson comes over to help out. It results in the steal for Auburn, Aubrey Wiley. Great job defensively by Auburn so far in this game. West Person, four for five from the floor. All of Auburn's 10 points. He came in averaging 18 a game. Gallon inside. Edmund Wilson, who just checked in, gets the rebound. Emmett Hall. The kiss off the glass. And this is West Person again. Somebody should introduce himself to West Person. Well, one of the things I think that South Carolina does not do a good job of is getting back on defense, protecting the basket, and then building out to find their men. And that time they got burned. We don't want to make Person out to be a, just a one-dimensional player. He's led the team in rebounding in one game. He's led them in assists one game. And, of course, he's their leading scorer. South Carolina's working very hard to get Emmett Hall involved in the game. That's very important to them. Great job execution there. They had to give him the basketball on that possession. Bynum to Emmett Hall, averaging 12 a game. Probably their most consistent player, offensively and defensively. Quite a few junior college players in this game, including Emmett Hall. Ronnie Battle, the block by Hall, but the foul before that, they're going to call Battle with the charge. Well, watch how hard Emmett Hall works for the ball down at this end of the floor, Dan. South Carolina knows he has to be involved in the game for them to be successful, and they do a great job. Excellent coaching by Steve Newton there to make sure he gets a basket. Steve Newton said Emmett Hall gives us an attitude. He's cocky, he wants the ball, he's not afraid to go after the team's best player. Junior college All-American. Well, as you pointed out earlier, Ronnie Battle is capable of putting big numbers up. 43 last year against Georgia in a conference game. But he has not been playing that well this year. They've got person on track, they need to get Battle on track. Hall inside. They're going to go the other way with it, calling on Emmett Hall. That's his second. Shannon Hoskins in the game for South Carolina, giving a spell to Kerry Rich and Lance Weems in for the Auburn Tigers. And you may ask, how does Auburn gang up like that inside defensively? Well, they're daring South Carolina to shoot the ball on the perimeter. South Carolina shooting less than 30% from three-point range. Aaron Swinson follows up his own miss. West person, oh, he's human, barely. Shannon Hoskins, the freshman in the game now, and one thing that Steve Newton thinks he can do is provide them some three-point shooting at the point spot, which they desperately need right now. Swinson at the other end, and the rejection by Watson, but the follow-up by Gallon. Well, just great defense by Auburn and a good job of converting that into a basket at the other end of the floor. Mark Hutton had the block at the other end. Find him again. Edmund they're Wilson. They're just daring South Carolina to make the perimeter shot. And again, you see South Carolina slow getting back even after the score. Aaron Swinson left alone. Inside 13 minutes, you surprised with anything so far, aside from nobody bothering West Person? Well, I think Auburn is doing a very good job of executing their game plan. South Carolina's going to have to get some perimeter shooting to be successful. Edmund Wilson. After the pass from Emmett Hall. South Carolina has a strong bench, and Edmund Wilson shows you how strong their bench is. He's a big fellow who comes into the game and gives them a presence in the paint. Gallon, they're going to get Hoskins with the push. Oh, 
Shannon Hoskins, who was third in the balloting for Mr. Kentucky Basketball, the prestigious award in that state. Lesso back in. Wholesale substitutions. Troy McCoy, his first appearance for South Carolina. Mark Hutton. Hoskins barely drawing iron. Swinson with the rebound. They're only getting one shot. Well, again, when you're not shooting well from the perimeter, you can't stretch the defense, and it's hard to get to those offensive boards. And that is one thing South Carolina been, has been doing well in recent games is getting to the offensive boards. Troy McCoy, number 13 in the game now, is instant offense off the bench. He's the third leading scorer for South Carolina and their leading scorer and rebounder in terms of minutes played. Wade Franklin also in for South Carolina. Steve Newton making wholesale substitutions, looking for something that would give them some rhyme or reason. Hutton with his second block of the game. It's not who starts, it's usually who finishes for South Carolina. Right now, Steve Newton looking for the answer. He's history's most celebrated quarterback. Now he's coaching Budweiser in Bud Bowl 5. Yes, some men are born to be football legends. Give every last drop. We're going to win. We're Budweiser. Of course, some men aren't. We'll win it, because we're Bud Light. Huh? You ever wonder how they get the strings in these things? Bud Bowl 5. It's back. Get your ticket where you buy Bud, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. Someone will win a million in cash. With Russ Beeler's in-laws in town, he served KFC Super Value Buckets. Get 15 pieces of original recipe or a bucket full of hot wing pieces. The KFC Super Value Buckets, just $9.99 each. We do chicken right. The doctor's ready. That cold pill. Antihistamine. Sometimes they make you sleepy. Well, there aren't any in Advil cold and sinus. It's tough on the cold. Mm -hmm. Not on you. Advil cold and sinus. Advanced formula for the cold season. I'm chief financial officer. I'm a vice president. I'm the president. I'm a penny pitcher. We pinch pennies. We, we own the place. place. I'm an accountant. I make all the financial decisions. If it's a nickel, I want it. Sure, it's only money. But it's my money. Buck saved is a buck earned. Absolutely. Just trying to see if we get more bang for the buck. What overnight service would I recommend? UPS. 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 Saves us a lot of money. Probably 20 to 30 percent. 30, 40 percent. Easily 40 percent. You bet when you say 40 percent. 10, 30 guaranteed. UPS. UPS. United Parcel. They give you the best service for the best dollars. How can you beat that? The preseason predictions in the SEC had the Auburn Tigers as the team to beat, at least in the West. That was the preseason. That was then. This is now. Auburn, a disappointing 0-3, and, and they've had a chance to win all three games, 5-5 five and five overall. As for South Carolina, nobody expected anything out of them. They're now tied for second. Tommy Joe Eagles, his fourth year at Auburn, still looking for a winning season. Well, they've shown flashes of brilliance, and in this game today, you've seen them play extremely well. So he knows that they can win in the ACC, and they could easily win the division if they can get rolling. So this is an important game for them. They don't want to go 0-4. You mentioned at the outset that he doesn't know what to expect from his team. They have tremendous talent like that. Aubrey Wiley. But he says, I just don't know when they're going to show up. We practice very well. But the problem is when we get in the game, particularly late in the game, my team disappears. Well, they've got a lot of players that are trying to get started. Uh, Ronnie Battle's not playing that well offensively. They know that they need him to play well, so they're trying to get him some points. Mark Hutton, the junior college transfer who's in the game now, has been starting for them and has a wealth of potential, but he hasn't played well either. So they're trying to find the right combinations. Six offensive rebounds for the Tigers. Carolina's turned up the heat a little bit defensively here, but that means Auburn's going to go inside because they'll have more room in the inside. Wiley forces it. Wade Franklin with the rebound. When South Carolina gets shots they're making, they shoot 50%. But the problem is, Auburn's getting more chances thanks to the offensive board work. Edmund Wilson... 
Gallon controls it. Great pass inside to Aubrey Wiley. They have continually beat them down the floor. Well, what happens is the South Carolina players are picking up their men at three-quarter court. They're not protecting the basket first and then building the defense out from the basket. Wilson tried it to get it, get it into Leslo. A great defensive rotation there. Oh, good job, Reggie Gallon with his head up, looking down court, and again, South Carolina not protecting the basket. Lesso keeps it alive and is fouled. One of the few times they've been active on the offensive board. Well, what's happening here is South Carolina is still going to their strength, and Auburn is just saying, we're going to take that away from you, and they're ganging up like crazy inside. South Carolina's doing a pretty good job under the circumstances. Look at all these blue shirts around the basket here. But South Carolina gets on the boards themselves, and again, Edmund Wilson keeping it alive, and that's how Chris Lesso ends up with the basketball. The fans gave a mock cheer to the refereeing crew, finally calling something for the... Frank McGuire Arena on the campus of South Carolina, Dan Patrick and Terry Holland, the visitors leading by six right now. Now, Albert in the zone on the underneath out of bounds. Let's see if uh, South Carolina can exploit the zone for a little easier shot. This is about the only time you'll see zone from them, isn't it? In the out-of-bounds? Yeah, both teams pretty much will not play zone unless they just get into horrible foul trouble. They'll stay with their man-to-man -man during the meat of the game, but underneath out-of-bounds, they'll normally both play zone. 18 on the shot clock. Wiley with a steal. Three on two break. That's a goal, Tim. You got a chance to see the great leaping ability of Jamie Watson. Unfortunately for the Gamecocks, it counts as two points for the Tigers. And again, they're doing a great job defensively, and that's what's creating these opportunities at their end of the floor. Great job by Gallon attacking the basket, and you can see Jamie Watson gets it almost at the rim. Rich to Wilson. I like Wilson. He's an equalizer in there, and he does give South Carolina some strength inside as well as the ability to score inside. He was wide open while I go against the zone, and they couldn't get it back around the perimeter to him. A couple of the coaches in the SEC said Wilson was probably the most improved player this year. See knee braces on both knees. Been battling that throughout his career. Wiley with the travel. Right now, South Carolina's playing much tougher on the perimeter, and inside, they're using their size with Chris Lasso and Edmund Wilson to play one-on-one -on -one against Aubrey Wiley and Aaron Swenson, who are much smaller. They're just saying, we don't think you can score on us one-on-one -on -one inside. Approaching the eight-minute mark, Steve Newton has predicted plenty of substitutions. He has not find the, found the right mixture yet. Watson. And he does seem to find the creases against this Auburn defense. That's three times he's taken the ball into the lane and scored for South Carolina. Watson with six of his team's 19 as the crowd comes to life. A little different lineup in here now for South Carolina. They've actually got both point guards in the game. That helps them defensively and it really helps them offensively because they have not been getting a high field goal shooting percentage from that two spot. Wiley. And once again, Auburn keeps it alive on the offensive glass. Swinson. How about Wesley Person, though, on that pass? It didn't result in a basket. He won't get an assist for that. And what great presence of mind under the basket with people all around him to be able to make a pass like he did out of trouble. Swinson the steal, the three-on-one, and Swinson at the other end. Well, the Auburn defense is becoming more and more aggressive now. They're trapping at midcourt. They're sort of throwing caution to the wind and saying, we know we've got you on the run a little bit. And South Carolina, even with both point guards in the game, is not able to attack the defense. 
good job of gambling and recovering. They're back set now to the straight man to man. Rich, the tough jumper. Oh, what a great offensive rebound by Edmund Wilson. But you can see that Kerry Rich doesn't feel comfortable shooting the ball either from the perimeter or driving it into the lane where he feels the presence of the big guys. I think Auburn needs to get an inside basket here. Got Wiley for traveling again. Are you surprised that they let their bigger men handle the ball as much out front? Well, I think South Carolina's definitely picked up the tempo. To shop at Below the Knee. Number 10, more shoes than Emilda Marcos and any sorority on campus combined. Number 9, enough spandex to satisfy Madonna. Number 8, one word, Umbro. Number 7, more hats than that Hey Vern guy. Number 6, Ray and Ed, no shoes, personally. Number 5, Katie and Connie, way cooler than Cisco and Ebert. Number 4, location, location, location. Number 3, environmentally aware store hours. Number 2, easy horizontal or vertical parking. Number 1, accept all of Mom and Dad's credit cards. The top 10 reasons to shop at Below the Knee. Get this close to the thrill of real life on the Discovery Channel. It's your world. Tony Tubbs, the former world champion, is on the comeback trail battling for the USBA Heavyweight Championship against Tyrell Biggs. Top Rank Boxing, Sunday night, live on ESPN. It's showtime, one more time. Top seniors make sure the scouts know exactly who they are when they show their stuff in the star-studded Senior Bowl. Saturday afternoon at 2 Eastern, live on ESPN. Here you see the Auburn defense becoming more and more aggressive, looking for the trap now at midcourt. They make the point guard give it up. What a great job, Aaron Swenson. And look at the finish here. Very good three-on-one fast break. Almost classic of how you'd like to trap and come up with the steal as well as convert it at the other end of the floor. We're seeing the Auburn team that was projected in the preseason to be the best team in the West right now. But keep in mind, all three of their SEC losses, they were leading in the second half. So they're a team that cannot put the opposition away. We'll see if that happens today. Pressure defense has bothered South Carolina. Well, now, South Carolina had not been turning the ball over in these last seven games as nearly as much as they had in the first five games. They averaged over 22 turnovers a game in their first five, only 14 plus in their last seven games, and that's why they're five and two in those seven games. Lesso for the three. Well, that surprised me. I'm sure it surprised the Auburn team. Chris Lesso out on the perimeter for the three-point shot. Ronnie Battle answers at the other end. The sixth all-time leading scorer in school history. And that's quite a list in front of him. Auburn by five as we approach the five-minute mark. Considering the way Auburn's played, South Carolina has to be thrilled they're only down five because they have not looked good. Well, as many turnovers as they've had that have led directly to baskets. They're in very good shape, and Terry Bynum hitting the three-pointer is very big for them. Steve Newton up off the bench clapping. He knows his team needs some production from that two spot. Terry Bynum shooting 30% coming into this game, and you can hear the fans groan when he takes a shot because they know he just hasn't been on. Wilson got a piece of it, and once again, Auburn comes up with the offensive rebound. takes it away from Wiley. Lesso. And Lesso looks very comfortable facing the basket. He said his stomach still didn't feel good today. Had the food poisoning yesterday. A tie ball game.
think Auburn's making a mistake here. They're moving their bigger guys outside because of the size disadvantage. But with all the room they've got to operate inside, I think they could use their quickness against this South Carolina team. I think Aaron Swenson can go by Edmund Wilson or Chris Lesso inside if they get him the ball in there. Coming up after our hoop game, the Senior Bowl at 2 o'clock Eastern, live from Mobile, Alabama. Derek Lassick from the National Champs, Alabama Crimson Tide, Elvis Gerbach, Hadri Ismail, also Reggie Brooks from Notre Dame. That's following the game. Well, as aggressive as Auburn has played up defensively, they have only fouled twice in this game. And again, that shows you how well they're playing, how much they're helping out. Rather than reaching and grabbing at one spot, they have everybody involved in the defense. South Carolina was on an 8-2 run over the last two and a half minutes to tie this game. Battle has given the Tigers a one-point lead. Wiley will sit down at a pretty active first half. Martin Hutton, number 25, back in the game for Auburn is a junior college transfer who has been described by Rick Pitino and others as a Stacy Auburn with a jump shot, but he just really hasn't found his niche on this Auburn team yet. Four minutes to play, first half. South Carolina with a chance to take the lead. Let's see where they go. Let's see if they know exactly what they want to accomplish on this possession. It's going to be South Carolina's basketball. Gallon thought he had a steal. Tommy Joe Eagles doesn't like what's happening right now, but his Tigers still lead by one. He's history's most celebrated quarterback. Now he's coaching Budweiser in Bud Bowl 5. Yes, some men are born to be football legends. Give every last drop. We're going to win it. We're Budweiser. Of course, some men aren't. We'll win it, because we're Bud Light. Oh. You ever wonder how they get the strings in these things? Bud Bowl 5. It's back. Get your ticket where you buy Bud, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. Someone will win a million in cash. Madison, you should have seen me at this meeting. I was cool, I was confident, I had everything they wanted before they could ask for it. Research, no problem. The analysis, the projections, never look better. Madison, oh, you should have been there. <laughs> Cambridge Businessware keeps you organized together and always looking your best in business. You and me, kid, we're going places, huh? <laughs> Cambridge Businessware, as important to the way you look as the clothes you wear. At BASF, we don't make the skates. We make them ride smoother. We don't make the shampoo. We make it gentler. We don't make the music. We make it clearer. We don't make the surfboard. We make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. The Tigers lead it by one, but they've watched a seven-point lead dwindle to one. Wes Person had 13 points up to the 15-minute mark. Since then, he has not scored. Missed a three-pointer, had another one blocked. South Carolina is very conscious of where he is on the court at all times, particularly after that start. Got a piece of it. Gallon finds Swinson at the other end. They're going to get him for walking. But and once again, again, Swinson beat him to the other end. Absolutely. And again, the size factor saved South Carolina that time. Now again, I don't think that that's what they drew up during that timeout. They had a chance to talk about what they wanted to do. And Terry Bynum, even though they need to get him started and they get, need to get some production from that two-guard spot, I don't think that's what they wanted. I think they wanted to go to Chris Lesso inside or to Edmund Wilson. Traveling at the other end, Jamie Watson called for steps. Well, Auburn creates the 
isolation for Aaron Swenson, but they don't give him the ball down there. I think I'd like to see him handle the ball down and just see what he could do against these defenders. Again, they screen for him. Good job by South Carolina that time. Ronnie Battle. Battle has five. Auburn a three-point lead. Good offensive execution that time by Auburn to get the uh, screen for Ronnie Battle, who set the screen first himself, and then they screened for him. Winston with the rebound. Troy McCoy, a tough shot over Mark Hutton. Hutton with two blocks already. Battle. You get the feeling he's trying to get into the flow of the game, but it's just not coming to him. Another tough shot, but he's fortunate to draw the foul this time. He doesn't look comfortable. You mentioned that with his first shot of the day. He really doesn't, and he had the open shot off the screen and then took the dribble, actually put himself in, into the position that he could feel the defense rather than taking the open shot. So he's not comfortable shooting the ball out on the perimeter. He does get to the free throw line here. Edmund Wilson checks back in. Rich originally went to Western Carolina. He's a hometown kid, came back a little bit homesick. He was the freshman of the year in the conference. Uh, had a great start to his college career at Western Carolina. As you say, the rookie of the year in the league. Coming up later on tonight, Kansas Jayhawks, Adonis Jordan leading the team, averaging five assists per game. Kansas fourth in the country and playing some great basketball, coming off an impressive win over Oral Roberts. That could be a dangerous game at Louisville, though. I had Louisville last week, and they, they have a lot of talent. They're kind of young, and they're growing, but this could be the game that turns it around for Louisville. This is Hutton. Person inside. They're going to get Watson with the foul. And again, as South Carolina has stepped up the tempo on the perimeter defensively, it opens up a lot of room inside for Auburn to take advantage of them. Good job by Person of hanging in there and going up strong. Well, Steve Newton said it was all ball. You're supposed to get those calls at home, aren't you? You know, they say they even up, and you have to believe that as a coach, but it seemed like every single one when I was coaching, Dan, went against my team. Oh, okay. Here we go. Let me get that crying towel. I got it here somewhere. <laughs> Gallon with the body to Shannon Hoskins. Well, Auburn can afford to be aggressive here. They've only got now 14 fouls after that one, so they, I, I, wouldn't, I would expect them to be just as aggressive. They're now trapping the inbounds pass. They've gone from half-court trapping, which they didn't do early in the game. Now they're looking forward at the full-court level as well, and here comes Ronnie Battle to create the trap. South Carolina doesn't have a point guard who's going to blow right by you. That's why Auburn can afford to press as much as they want, and they force the turnovers. Approaching the one-minute mark. Hoskins, the circus shot, tried to put it back up, and the three-on-none break and say goodnight. What a great outlet pass, though. Right off the boards, a little tip out to Reggie Gallon, who knows exactly what to do with it. He's looking down floor. Aaron Swinson. to Watson. Great look, and that's what they've got to be able to do if they're going to negate this pressure. Hoskins with a lot of pressure out there, having a hard time seeing the floor because he is smaller, as is Kerry Rich when they trap him. And it's hard to see that open man. You know somebody's open, but you can't find him. That time he found Jamie Watson. Watson with eight. Auburn playing for the final shot. Gallon. The rejection by Edmund Wilson. Good as it goes. 
Excellent job by Jamie Watson. Had his eye on the clock the whole way. He knew what he was doing. He gave his team a chance to get the three-pointer. South Carolina is still in it. They were tied at one point at 29. The Delta Fawcett Report with Chris coming up. Scores and highlights from around college basketball. Dan, Terry, thank you. Auburn with a four-point lead at halftime. That's nothing new. It would be new if they could hold on to it. The three losses by 15 points. We'll see if they can hold the lead in the second half. Reminder tonight, 7.30 Eastern time following a sports center. Number four, Kansas, goes into Freedom Hall to play Louisville. Denny Crum expected to be back on the bench after missing one game with the flu. We'll come back with the Delta Fox at halftime report. Scores and highlights. Purdue getting a battle in the Big Ten at halftime from Penn State. And also one of the great unknown players in college basketball. Vin Baker of Hartford. That will be continued. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A small touch. A certain look. It's the little things that are worth the most. Which is why every Delta faucet gives you more than you'd ever expect for the money. Giving you the money for those things you can't even put a value on. Delta, the way water is brought to life. This week, Russ Beeler's in-laws came to Lake Edna, and how better to feed a group like this than the KFC Super Value Buckets? 15 pieces of the Colonel's original recipe, just $9.99, and super-sized buckets of zesty hot wing pieces, also $9.99. Super Value Buckets are here for a limited time. And thankfully, so are my in-laws. The KFC Super Value Buckets. We are KFC. We do chicken right. Most people know State Farm sells car and homeowner's insurance. Some people don't know State Farm sells life insurance, too. I'm State Farm agent Cecil Burt. Our life insurance policies, our prices, and our financial ability to deliver on our promises, plus the good neighbor service State Farm agents are famous for, have made State Farm one of the largest of all life insurance companies and an outstanding life insurance value. State Farm sells life insurance. And welcome to our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Halftime from the SEC. It's Auburn by four. We shift now to the Big Ten. Purdue and Penn State meeting for the first time in 32 years. Both these teams, one and two in the Big Ten. So Purdue badly needs a victory at State College to get back into the race. John Amici backs in, scores on the short jumper for the Lions at Rec Hall. Penn State goes outside. Deron Hayes pops the jumper. The underdog Lions by six. They're thinking upset. But the super soft for Purdue, Glenn Robinson would then take over. Robinson off the miss with the tip in. Penn State, no one inside to contain him. Robinson then posts up, a tough shot inside. And then Robinson on the offensive glass, rebound, hauls in the uh, board and makes a little short jumper. Eight of Purdue's first 12 points. But Penn State with a one-point lead at halftime, searching for the upset as the crowd going nuts there. We'll keep you posted on that ball game throughout the afternoon. George Washington take it on UMass in the Atlantic 10. The Colonials have won the last two meetings in this series. They haven't won at the cage in a while, though. And UMass jumped out and dominated in the early going. John Calipari's team at Hicks Cage. The opening tip-off, how quickly do they dominate? Well, Tony Barbie goes in for the jam, seconds into the game, and gets fouled. Then Mike Williams buries the three. And the trademark tough Minuteman defense, Williams steps in, makes the steal, goes coast to coast, it was an 18-2 run for Massachusetts to start the game. They now have a 12-point lead at halftime, 34-22. And we will keep you posted on that ballgame. GW trying to break a two-game losing streak. We'll come back and talk about Vin Baker. The NBA scouts know who he is. You'll know who he is next year in the pros, but we'll tell you who he is in college. And a reminder that uh, the top 25 today and tonight includes Notre Dame, Michigan, Iowa, Duke, Duke also has to play Virginia tomorrow on ESPN and our ball game tonight, Kansas and Louisville. At Illinois, Lou Henson going for career win number 600 against Bob Knight. Seton Hall, the hottest team in the East. They've won 11 straight. Georgia Tech only beat the College of Charleston by seven points last year since he hadn't beaten DePaul since 74-75. UConn, an eight-game winning streak against Boston College. Oregon State, they'll be tough at home for UCLA. Georgetown against Villanova, about to get underway. The Cats trying to break a three-game losing streak. 
And also in the Big East, Syracuse against Providence. The Friar is tough at home. They beat in Arizona and also BC there. Back with more in a minute. This halftime report is presented by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Want to dance in and I'm the mayor. Yo, fella, how about a game of hoops? Hey, what? With you? No, with your mama. Mom? This guy was good, but he was all dribble. Say what? Come on, oh, man. man. Deserve one of these. Franchise for the call, bud. Solid. For all of you with the courage to go it alone, to put your future on the line and your name on the door, there's the corporate card from American Express. Use it for all your business expenses. We'll organize them by category and even provide records of charges. It's a great way for any company to get a handle on costs. Call 1-800-SUCCESS, the corporate card to your success. trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. For the right car at the right price. Call your travel consultant or budget. The smart money is on budget. If I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off season anymore. And when I get sore, I take Advil. To last, you stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Auburn leads South Carolina by four. This is the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. You know, by all rights, the name Vin Baker should roll off the tongue like Anthony Hardaway, Calvert Chaney, Chris Webber. It does not because Baker does not play at a powerhouse program. He plays close to home at the University of Hartford. Still, Baker is the second leading scorer in the nation. He remains unknown to everybody except hardcore hoops fans and NBA scouts. Linda Cohn went in search of the answer to the question, who is Vin Baker? Rebound by Baker using the left hand, and he's able to hit. And we have a new North Atlantic Conference all-time leading scorer. He's got a lot of nice skills. He's got a lot of NBA talent there. I'm Vin Baker. But for all the six-foot, 11-inch Vin Baker is, what he is not is well-known. He plays for a small North Atlantic Conference school in the middle of Big East country. His games are not heard by many, broadcast locally, only on a 5,000-watt radio station. Coming out of the small town of Old Saybrook, Connecticut, he was an unimposing high school string bean, and since no one expected him to grow four more inches and add 47 pounds, only Hartford and two other small schools showed any interest. University of Hartford was there, you know, throughout my senior year, and they, they gave me a chance, and they gave me a scholarship, so, you know, I wasn't really the big-time All-American. But Hartford saw talent, and in turn, Baker saw the opportunity to develop into a multi-skilled player. My coaches have allowed me, you know, to dribble the ball up the court, to take a three-pointer, and to do things, you know, to expand my game, and I wouldn't have been able to do those things at a, at a bigger school. Vin Baker is obscure no more. He may be nestled away here on this small campus at the University of Hartford, but NBA scouts have had no trouble finding him. And for that matter, neither has the media. Page 50, Sporting News. He's been a household name in the NBA for four years. Page 78, Sports Illustrated. And much of this attention is the result of three years of work with Kevin McHale at the Celtic Forward Summer Camp. He reminds me maybe of like a young David Robinson type player, you know, that type of quickness. His ability to shoot the ball and his quickness, guard people, defend, rebound, he can do everything. He's, but you can't teach the physical quickness he has at his size. Kevin gave me um, confidence, and it, it wasn't a particular move or a particular thing he showed me. It was, it was just the fact that he showed me I have to have confidence coming from within it. 
Baker has impressed NBA scouts who believe he could follow in the footsteps of some other small school standouts, such as Scottie Pippen from Central Arkansas and Reggie Lewis from Northeastern, like Hartford, a North Atlantic Conference school. If you play against tough competition, maybe you're, you're ready a little sooner for the NBA, but I think as he plays in the NBA, he's going to get better. If I had to compare him to one player, just in style now, I'm not saying he's, he's going to be this good, but in style, he's like Danny Manning. Not only physically, the way he looks, but the way he likes to play and what he likes to do with the ball. There aren't too many of them, uh, you know, among the 15,000 players we, we have playing at all levels of college basketball that can play in our league. Vinnie Baker, I feel, is one of them. Good to see there's still room for late bloomers in college basketball. You don't have to be a Nike All-American to someday be a lottery pick. Baker has helped Hartford to six wins already this year. That equals their total from all of last year. We'll come back with more scores and highlights from a Saturday afternoon in college basketball. And a reminder that tomorrow, Duke tries to complete a very tough weekend. They have Iowa today. They have number 14, Virginia, at Cameron Indoor Stadium, 5 o'clock Eastern time. At halftime of our ball game, Auburn on the road, up by four. Aaron Swenson... We'll come up with a dunk, and then he'll find the camera. Car dealers don't like to hear this, but they say the bottom line is lower at Dias. It's lower on Toyota. It's lower on Nissan. It's lower on Chevy Oldsmobile Cadillac. Dias delivers a lower bottom line. Big city selection, small town overhead. A lower bottom line. Give us a chance to prove it, and you be the judge. Dias Chevy Olds Cadillac, Opelika -like Road in Auburn. Dias Nissan South College in Auburn. Dias Toyota Columbus Parkway in Opelika. The bottom line is lower at Dias. It's lower. To shop at Below the Knee. Number 10, more shoes than Emilda Marcos and any sorority on campus combined. Number 9, enough spandex to satisfy Madonna. Number 8, one word, Umbro. Number 7, more hats than that Hey Vern guy. Number 6, Ray and Ed no shoes, personally. Number 5, Katie and Connie, way cooler than Cisco and Ebert. Number 4, location, location, location. Number 3, environmentally aware store hours. Number 2, easy horizontal or vertical parking. Number 1, accept all of Mom and Dad's credit cards. The top 10 reasons to shop at Below the Knee. Does Kansas have the nation's best backcourt? Judge for yourself when Adonis Jordan and Rex Walters lead the Jayhawks against Louisville. Saturday night, live at 7.30 Eastern. And welcome back. Drake and Bradley going at it in the Missouri Valley Conference. One of these teams can pick up their third conference win, which equals the total for each of them all of last year. Two teams trying to improve the program. Kurt Smith for Drake receives the nice backdoor pass, but Marcus Pollard swats it off the glass. Drake in 11-2 cushion. Jeff Allen with the swipe and the breakaway flush. Later in the first half, Kurt Smith, the strip, gets the ball back from Clayton Allen and converts the lay-in. 39-33 Bulldogs at halftime. Smith with 14 points in the first half. We'll keep you posted on that ball game throughout the afternoon. And a reminder that following our basketball game, the Senior Bowl from Mobile, Alabama, the Missile, Elvis Gerbach, Lassick, Reggie Brooks. Back to Dan and Terry for the second half after this. Get your little behinds in there. All over the world, there's a ritual that takes place right before bedtime. Ears. And for over 35 years, one faucet has helped more kids get away with it. And you two better be clean. Or not. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Recently, one million cases of Diet Pepsi were sent free to loyal Diet Coke drinkers. I wonder if some of them are singing a different tune now. It's got a hold on me, right in the soul of me. I'm a changed man. This is the right one, baby. Uh-huh. It makes you wonder, what would happen if everyone tried Diet Pepsi? No comment, baby. No doubt about it. Only one taste is the right one. Makes me feel like singing. You got the right one, baby! Serious times demand serious men. Hard work is the reward for hard work. Tenacity, gumption, discipline. Sometimes you've got to stop and smell the pizza.
there's nothing better than winning a Super Bowl or a NASCAR race. But to finish strong, you have to start fresh. Interstate batteries are fresh. For factory fresh power, call 1-800-CRANKIT. Start fresh with Interstate. Nicoderm. Nicotine transdermal system by prescription only. I'd heard about the Nicoderm patch, but uh, when it comes to something like that, I only go to one place for advice. Nicoderm. Ask your doctor about it. After all, who knows better? ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1993 Mercury automobiles. Welcome back to Frank McGuire Arena on the campus of South Carolina where the Gamecocks holding close against the Auburn Tigers. The Tigers leading it by four. They led by as many as seven in the first half. Welcome back. I'm Dan Patrick. Joining me, Terry Holland. And with Auburn, we talked about a team that had a lot of talent, a team that could do it inside and outside. We've seen that in the first half. Well, we have. And one of the things that I thought happened is, as South Carolina picked up their defensive pressure on the perimeter, Auburn needed to go inside. And what they did by creating this opportunity Watch Ronnie Battle here. He's going to screen across the lane for Aaron Swenson. Swenson's going to be covered, but Ronnie Battle's going to end up with a good shot out of this. This is great inside, outside play. By looking inside, they create a good shot for Ronnie Battle, who really has not been playing as well offensively, and one of the reasons is because they haven't been able to get him shots like that out of the offense. You see the first half numbers. Both teams have shot well, but the key is Auburn has had more chances thanks to their work on the offensive glass. Well, and, and while South Carolina only has seven turnovers, a lot of those turnovers have occurred in open court, and Auburn has been very quick to take advantage of them and convert at the other end of the floor. South Carolina had a great run at the end of the first half to make it close, because this one was on the verge of getting out of hand. Aubrey Wiley picks up where he left off in the first half. I think that's a good move for Auburn to go right at South Carolina inside. Emmett Hall stayed on the bench for a long time, only eight minutes in that first half. He's been very effective, averaging over 16 points a game in their Southern Southeastern Conference games this year. Only four points today. Both teams have been in man-to-man -man pretty much throughout. Kerry Rich for three. And he looked a lot better on that one. He had a little time, and he was able to get his feet up under him. That was a nice three-pointer. His problem has been he hasn't been able to set. He's had a couple of shots driving off balance. <laughs> well, Watson playing a little bit better defense on Wesley Person here in the second half, or at least to start it, because... Person had 13 points quickly, ended up with 15 in the first half, but he was quiet the last five minutes. Ronnie Battle falls into Lesso's lap. The battle just doesn't seem to be nearly as effective off the dribble. Emmett Hall. Battle controls two on three, but Battle likes the numbers. Aaron Swinson with the follow-up. Once again, another offensive rebound. This time they lose it out of bounds. Well, when you've got the numbers, you like to get it up on the glass. And while that was not an easy shot that Ronnie Battle took that particular time, you like to get the ball up there and give everybody a chance at it. Aaron Swinson had an excellent opportunity. It just slipped out of his hands. Swinson has hobbled a little bit, clutching his knee. Bynum. Battle may have gotten a piece of that one. Didn't look like Swinson's knee was bothering on that rebound. See, and that's what's, what Auburn can do against South Carolina's big guys. Get them up in the air and then get up under them. And that's exactly what Auburn Riley did that time to draw the foul against Chris Lesso. Good job of positioning down inside. Gets him up in the air. And now he's going to go under and he can't get around him. Lesso has to foul. Why is a good free throw shooter? Nearly 80%. They also let him take the three pointer when he wants to. It's kind of surprising. He's kind of a different breed when it comes to being able to play inside, having the power, but also having the finesse to play outside. 
Bangs both of them. He's been playing less than 10 minutes a game for him and has been to the free throw line 20 times already this year. That, that makes 22. Uh, he's a player who makes things happen when he's in the game. He's got eight, came in averaging five. Watson. Wilson keeps it alive. Hall keeps it alive, and finally the putback. There's a good example. When you've got the numbers, you want the ball up on the glass because you've got a chance to stick it in the goal, even if you don't make the first one. You don't want to make a tough pass. Jamie Watson did the right thing. He put it up there and let his guys go get it. I don't know who they gave the basket to. Could have been Wilson, could have been Hall, could have been Watson. Take your pick. They were both up there. Swinson. Swinson again. I like the fact that Auburn is putting the ball inside to Wiley and to Swenson right now. Gary Rich, another tough shot, gets it to go. Two in a row for Rich. He created a little room for himself down there and took advantage of it. in where he shouldn't be and Emmett Hall makes him pay for it they're going to get Hall with the foul that's his third he sat out most of the first half with two fouls and he got those early well they're definitely going to leave him in the game here they need him to start playing well and they're going to go after him as hard as they can they're going to try to put the ball in his hands Emmett Hall just throws it out of bounds. Well, that's a tough turnover because Auburn did not force that one. One thing you know, notice about Wesley Person is he doesn't force anything. Here's a great shooter, but he doesn't force his shots. He hasn't taken a shot yet. We're nearly four minutes into the second half. He didn't take shots towards the tail end of the first half. He takes what you give him. And, of course, South Carolina's defense has not given him much right now. They're very conscious of where he is on every possession. Rich again. Gonna get Gallon again with a foul, and Terry Rich is proving to be their offensive weapon here in the second half. Well, they're creating that isolation on the open side of the floor and just letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe they feel like they've got an advantage there, and he's certainly producing right now. Rich at 6-1, Gallon at 5-10. I don't know if you'd call that a distinctive height advantage, but he's using it to his advantage. He's got six already, averaging seven on the year. Now, Steve Newton must have spotted something because they're definitely going out of their way to create that opportunity for Kerry Rich. rebounds have kept Auburn in the lead throughout this game and again I thought Aaron Swenson did a great job he turned and faced got himself under control waited for the everybody to clear out in there and Aubrey Wiley really ends up with a free one here great job of holding position waiting till he's fouled and then releasing the basketball three fouls on Edmund Wilson three fouls on Emmett Hall South Carolina starting to get some easy baskets now by pushing the ball down the floor themselves. Kerry Rich with the foul on Reggie Gannon. Reggie Gallon, I should say. Got a timeout on the floor. Wholesale substitution set to check in. We'll update you on who's coming in and out. Sure. 
first, we were going to use a lot of glamorous professional models to advertise our cars. Then we considered the famous basketball player. What's his name with the shoes? We also looked at expensive special effects, catchy jingles and snappy slogans. Then we had the big idea. Why not just show all the cars? And mention things like smooth ride and fully equipped comfort and leave the gimmicks to the other guys. Okay, so we used one glamorous professional model. All this and the quality of the Mercury. With Russ Beeler's in-laws in town, he served KFC Super Value Buckets. Get 15 pieces of original recipe or a bucket full of hot wing pieces. The KFC Super Value Buckets, just $9.99 each. We do chicken right. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all leading brands. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended number one. Welcome back to the Frank McGuire Arena on the campus of South Carolina. Dan Patrick along with Terry Holland. That's Brian Lane. With his back to you, the assistant coach. He got engaged last night at midcourt at around 8.30. He had everybody clear out of the building. He said he didn't know how to give his now fiance an engagement ring. Put out the red carpet and put the ring at the center court line. And the rest, I guess, is history. She did say yes, by the way. That shows a lot of courage to do that. <laughs> no, courage would have been everybody's in here and he did it today. Wilson knocks the ball away from Swinson. It'll stay Auburn's basketball. Well, Brian's not allowed to go off campus to recruit, but he evidently has done a good recruiting job there because she said yes. Wesley Person with his first shot of the second half, and like most of those in the first half, he makes them. Edmund Wilson. Jamie Watson, the last to put his paws on it. It'll be Auburn's basketball. Are you uh, surprised at the shot selection of South Carolina here in the second half? Well, actually, I thought that was a good play to go inside to Wilson that time. They need to put some pressure on Auburn inside, and that's a good way to do it. South Carolina is the one in foul trouble right now. Wilson with three, Emmett Hall with three. Of course, Auburn's been in this position a lot of times. They're leading in the second half, and they've got to learn to put the game away. Ronnie Battle. I don't think they're going to get that one. I think they're going to get Mark Hutton for over the back. Mark Hutton has yet to score today. He came in with... Plenty of press clippings, and is it tougher for a player who's been a Juco All-American like Hutton to come in more so than a freshman, say? I think so. A junior college player only has two years to be effective. They know that. There's a lot of pressure on them. A freshman knows they've got four years. I think Mark Hutton's really been pushing himself and trying to do a little bit too much, maybe. That's Hutton. I haven't heard the call on that one. Well, I lost it unless they just finally decided they were going to give South Carolina <laughs> basketball. It may have been a travel. He did push off a little bit with that offhand, but I never saw the uh, indication. Yeah, it must have been traveling. They don't have uh, Hutton whistled for a foul. Rich again to Emmett Hall. Great job by South Carolina. They were looking inside hard. They found the crease in the defense, and Kerry Rich takes it inside and then makes the dump off for the easy one. Ronnie Battle. They've run that play twice for him. He's hit the jumper both times. 50-44. Definitely, definitely much more effective standing and shooting the basketball than he is off the dribble. Watson. 
Jason, the acrobatic shot. Well, you see a little bit of that Jordan-esque uh, hanging in the air, able to turn his body while he's up in the air. That was a great shot. Watson with 12. He's averaging 14, their leading score, as we approach the 13-minute mark. And once again, Auburn cannot put away the opposition. Swinson gets Wilson up. Another tough shot by Rich. Draws the foul on Gallon once again. But South Carolina much more aggressive, Dan. That time, they're not doing that out of the set offense. They're doing it in sort of an unsettled situation, and it really puts Gallon at a disadvantage, and that's his third foul. Gallon will sit down. He's got three. And of course, his replacement is Sean Stewart, who is not an offensive player. He doesn't look for the shots, but he's a very fine defender. And he comes from Eight Mile Rock in the Bahamas. That sounds like a great place. I'd like to be there today. He said, don't say Freeport. It's Eight Mile Rock. We said, how big is it? Not very big, Mon. Rich is normally a 73% free throw shooter, but he's struggling today a little bit. Only making one of every two when he goes up there. Sean Hoskins comes in. Wade Franklin in at the two spot as well, and he's going to match up with Stewart at the point spot defensively, with Hoskins moving over to guard battle. Hoskins with a steal. Troy McCoy, Franklin. South Carolina pulls to within one. Wesley Person. Well, that was a good defensive block. The ball may have hit the board, but in college it doesn't matter. As long as it's still going up, you can block it. Edmund Wilson with the block. He leads the team in that category with 16 prior to that one. Great move by Pearson, but Wilson just says, no way. Is this where you want Wesley Person to be more offensive-minded? He's only taken one shot in the second half, aside from the one that was blocked. Hopkins with a steal. Edmund Wilson nearly got it to go. The reach-in foul on battle. A good job by Wilson. The big guy in the open court sometimes is at a disadvantage. He did a nice job there with the, the point guard, Stewart, chasing it. South Carolina's defense is much more active and they're aggressive with the basketball when they get possession and that's created more scoring opportunities for them this half. South Carolina has not led since leading two to nothing at the 1940 mark of the first half. Wilson misses both of them. Swinson. Now he's tough down there, and he's not afraid of Edmund Wilson. The fact that Wilson blocks shots doesn't bother Swinson. When he turns and faces like that, it gives him the opportunity to back the defense off. Watson. Evan Hall crashes to the floor. Take your pick as far as who fouled him. Heads up play by Jamie Watson. He looked inside. He saw the defense cheating. He drove the lane himself, drew the defense, and then made the play to Emmett Hall on the other side of the floor. Look at him. Heads up. He's looking at the rim, but he's seeing the whole floor. Nice job by Hall to go strong to get to the free throw line. Hutton whistled for his third. Emmett Hall, not a good free throw shooter, 65%. 
it never fails. If I said he was a great one, he would clank it. Well, free throw shooting was really a problem for South Carolina's team last year. They seem to have improved that, although today they have struggled a little bit at the free throw line with Edmund Wilson missing two the last time down floor. Emmett Hall makes both of them. We got a timeout on the floor. He has reason to applaud. His team is still in it, down by two. Lunch time. Later. We have to get in to see Mr. Kimbrough right now. Mind if I eat my Big Mac? Oh, no, no, no. Thanks for sandwiching us in. Well, there's a Big Mac, Mac, mechanical problem. Sounds serious, man. But it's something you can handle. We've solved this problem before. Right, James? James! Big Mac. Make that two. Man, that was a serious Big Mac attack. Yeah, I hear you. Will Power, my brother. What you want is what you get. Big Mac. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here comes Jim, in for a pit. Jim, backyard's next. Hey, no duels. Non-alcohol, 70 calories, perfect. After all, the competition is pretty stiff out of here. When you want the refreshing taste of beer without the alcohol, think O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Gentlemen, he is not a happy man. This Mercury Villager is outselling our minivan, and as his top design team, we have to do something about it. He wants a minivan with a sliding rear seat and standard anti-lock brakes. He wants a minivan that is fully equipped, comfortable, and drives like a Mercury. Why doesn't he just get a Villager? <laughs> the new front-wheel drive Mercury Villager. All this and the quality of a Mercury. Bell room. 11 days ago, Penn State collapsed against Ohio State. Lions trying to hang on against Purdue today, but Herb Dove strips to Ron Hayes, goes in for the dunk. That put Purdue up, but Penn State threes have him back in front. 9.30 to play. Back to Dan and Terry. Thank you, Chris. Auburn leading it by one. 11.27 to go. Auburn's been in this position before, Terry. Well, they have, and the thing they have not been able to do, even though they've led in the second half, they've not been able to finish it. They've got to learn to make the big plays at the end of the game. They have another opportunity here on the road today, and Tommy Joe Eagles is very anxious for his team to close one out. They're going to get wings for the travel. Good full court pressure by South Carolina. We haven't seen that from them today, and they really went after it that time. Now they've got a chance to go ahead. USC 7 for 12 here in the second half. 58%. Well, they've been more aggressive and they've created some turnovers that have given them the opportunity, and now they're going to get a chance to go against the Auburn zone. A chance to take their second lead of the game. All got knocked down, no call. Stewart, they're going to get Hoskins for the body. Now, Hall took the jumper from the baseline, and he definitely got fouled after the shot. But what happens is, so often, everybody watches the ball in flight, and they don't see what happens after the ball is released. Emmett Hall with six points, three rebounds here in the second half. He had only four points in the first half. He doesn't agree with the no call there. is not a good free throw shooter either 37 percent <laughs> Shannon Hoskins a good job of bringing the ball up against the full court pressure Wade Franklin And again, Franklin had the shot. He was open. He took the dribble, took it to the defense, and had to take a tough shot. It's very tough to shoot the ball off the dribble, and often you take yourself into a position that the defense actually affects your shot when you have an open shot. Aubrey Wiley with the foul. Lesso at the line. He had the three-pointer in the first half, the first one he has taken in his college career. That's 102 games, and he made it. 
Now he's played with a lot of confidence today, and with Emmett Hall out of the lineup so much in that first half, he had to step forward, particularly at the fourth spot, facing the basket. Did an excellent job for South Carolina. Kept them in the game. Gallon's back in. He's been in foul trouble. Stewart sits down, and the fans come to life. Here comes the South Carolina pressure. The reach in on Weems. Well, you just need to play solid defense. They definitely had Auburn backing off a little bit there. You don't want to foul and give them a chance to regroup. Kerry Rich back in. Hoskins will sit down. He got a little greedy. They were playing the great pressure defense and a little overreaction. Probably what he's hearing from his coaches right now. So we played over eight minutes. Person has two shots in the second half. You bothered by that? Yeah, I'd have to say at this stage, you've got to think of a way to get him involved in the game. To go inside, but then kick it back outside the person because he has to shoot the ball for Auburn to win. Franklin, another tough shot. He's got two of them to roll in. Behold, the Gamecocks have their second lead of the game. Well, this is crunch time for Auburn. They've got to find a way to step up and win a game like this. They're down by two after leading almost the whole game. Wiley once again on the glass. Well, those second chance opportunities are so critical. And at Hall. Franklin tried to keep it alive. This is Gallon at the other end. Stepped out of bounds on the alley oop. Frank McGuire Arena, Columbia, South Carolina. The SEC battle, East meeting West. South Carolina against Auburn. We're tied at 55 as we approach the nine-minute mark. Franklin. Well, Franklin, Franklin tried to create a shot there. That was a tough shot to take under these circumstances. And I've got to wonder why Auburn has Wesley Pearson still on the bench. I don't think he can be tired from being overused in the second half because they haven't gone to him. Wiley has been their man. Ronnie Battle. And again, when he's got his feet under him standing still, he's very effective. If he gets shots out of the offense, he can be a tremendous player. Person set to check in. We're going to get Hutton on the body on Emmett Hall. He's got four. These two went at each other when they were in the junior college ranks. And Hall really looked forward to this meeting because he says, Hutton likes to talk a good game. I like to play a good game. Well, of course, Hall has been playing very well against Southern Southeastern Conference opponents. He's been averaging 16-plus points a game and over nine rebounds a game in the conference games. And today has not been able to be effective, one, because of the Auburn defense, and number two, because of the foul trouble. I think I'm going to have to update my scouting report on his free throw shooting. He's made three in a row, a 65% free throw shooter coming in. Well, some players, even though they may not be good free throw shooters statistically, make them look like the eight-minute mark. 
Edmund Wilson with the rejection, but they're going to whistle him for the foul. And again, Auburn taking advantage of South Carolina, slowing down at midcourt to match up with their men. That time Emmett Hall was standing at midcourt. He could have easily been down helping Edmund Wilson find his man. Wilson's going to stay in despite the four. There have been a couple of calls that have gone against South Carolina. That one looked close. Well, it was a close one, but to try to wipe out a defensive mistake like that is very difficult, and you're quite often going to get called for a foul in that situation. You just don't put yourself in that kind of situation. But give credit to Auburn because they have consistently looked down the court and found their big men beating South Carolina's big men at the other end. Bynum. Ronnie Battle only rips there to stop him. And he does, but he'll be whistled for the foul. And that's one of those that's really chancy because by trying to keep the player from falling down, you could be called for an intentional foul, two shots in the basketball, and right now at this stage of the game, that would be crucial. The officials do a good job. He was definitely playing the ball and just trying to keep Ronnie Battle from getting hurt. Rich is whistled for his third. But again, South Carolina not getting back to protect the basket. Jimmy Watson back in. Battle has 11 on the afternoon. He came in averaging 14. So he continues to move up the charts on the Auburn scoring list. Got a timeout on the floor. Still plenty of time left. 7.39 to go. But that man's in the lead by six. I'd like to meet Peter. Peter makes movies. Uh, features. We were just talking about this movie that HBO made. It was so intense. Did what? you make that movie? No, well, no, no, I didn't. Oh, are you talking about that HBO movie? You have really guts. Oh, huh? Did you make that? No, no, I didn't. It was edgy. No, I didn't make it. Excuse me. I heard you make movies for HBO. Yes. Yes, I do. Original movies you don't want to miss. Just you wait. Tyler's introduces made-to-order sourdough sandwiches. Tyler's BLT, loaded with bacon and garden-fresh lettuce and tomato. The Swiss mushroom burger, mushrooms and gravy, two hamburger patties, and Swiss cheese. And the bacon cheddar burger, with two hamburger patties, bacon and cheddar cheese, only at Tyler's. You're gonna get it good, get it good at Tyler's. Hot Sports, ease the winter chill of February on ESPN. on the ESPN. The Gamecocks down by six. We mentioned at the outset, Terry, that South Carolina doesn't have a whole lot of stars, marquee players. They rely on eight to ten people, and their bench is just as important as their starters. Well, absolutely. They've been getting tremendous production. 34% of their production this year has come off the bench, and today they're just not getting it. You can see 21% today off the bench, and most of that has been Edmund Wilson. Tommy Joe Eagles has to feel good about the fact that his team fell behind at the 10-minute mark has now come back to take a six-point lead. Gary Rich. Emmett Hall keeps it alive. This is Watson, has the height advantage. Third offensive rebound, and it goes for Watson. Well, when you get four chances, you should be able to put it away, and that was a big defensive possession for Auburn. Look, look at this. 
That's got to be frustrating for Steve Newton. It's not like that's a, an isolated instance. That's happened the entire game. Swinson and Wiley have beaten South Carolina at the other end. Well, South Carolina worked so hard for their basket. Three offensive rebounds, and then, of course, Albert came right back and got theirs immediately. Wiley. What a time to take a three-pointer for the big guy. He drills it. <laughs> he looked over to say, I told you I could hit it, and he said that in warm-ups. He said, I can shoot the three. Steve Newton wants to call a timeout. Six fourteen to go. Is it starting to slip away for the Gamecocks? You know, I enjoy performing, but I also enjoy working out. That's why I go to General Nutrition Centers and get Cybergenics Phase 1. You get a training tape and a manual, plus five state-of-the-art supplements. Hey, if this guy can do it, you can do it. Get Cybergenics at GNC. There's one battery that backs you with free jumpstart service anywhere for any reason. Die Hard. Can't believe I left my lights on. Sears Die Hard. The battery you can count on to give you more power when you need it most. With this blindfold on, tell me what you smell. I can't smell anything. Did you put it up there yet? It's stuffed up so far into my nose, I just can't blow it out. I just want to be able to breathe. Would you try Drist and nasal spray? With this blindfold on again, tell me what you smell now. I can smell an orange, but that wasn't there that last time. I what do you feel I now? I can breathe all the way up through my nose. It just it cleared me up. Boom. Drist and nasal sprays, available in 12-hour and regular formulas. I'm State Farm Agent Jeff Libby. One of the most gratifying parts of my job is helping young parents, people who are just beginning to understand what life insurance is all about. Young couples don't need a sales talk. They just need to talk to someone who understands them and their life insurance needs. Now, I know what that promise of security means, and I don't believe there's a better promise a parent can make. State Farm sells life insurance. Aubrey Wiley went to the same high school as Wesley Person. He's proven to be just as good a shooter today. He a must career have, high 17. Must have taken some shooting lessons from Wesley on that one because with a six-point lead on the road to take that shot, that took a lot of courage, although he's three for six. Well, if they need a comeback guy, there's the man, Steve Tannehill. Fantastic he's the one job of leading his team back from a very poor start this year for Sparky Woods football team here at USC. Watson. Wow, that's a tough shot. That's impressive. That's a big basket for South Carolina and a steal. Emmett Hall with a steal. Good job by Auburn there to throw over. Sometimes after a turnover, you're afraid to throw it deep, and that's what they had to do to advance the ball. Auburn had their biggest lead of the game at nine. South Carolina cuts into that one. Well, the clock starts to become a factor, and sometimes you can slow down a little bit too much and be too cautious at this stage of the game. Auburn going with the set play here. Five on the shot clock. We own two. The numbers are with South Carolina. They're going to get Wesley Person for the reach in on Bytum. His second. Great defense on that possession by South Carolina against the set play. Person has three shots here in the second half. That one down in the corner that he had to force up to beat the shot clock. Had one blocked, and he made his other attempt. Good credit to Steve Newton coming up with a defensive scheme, or maybe just telling his players, look, number 11 is a good shooter. Please stay with him. They're down by three after being down by nine a minute ago.
inside five minutes to play. We're going to get Emmett Hall with the foul. How about Aubrey Wiley? He just steps forward every time they need him. The three-pointer, this time he goes out. Of course, South Carolina has to worry about him shooting the ball now, so they play him tough. He drives the lane, gets to the free-throw line. Just a really good job. Emmett Hall all over him. He sees the opening. He takes it to the basket strong. Nice job of closing the defense off at the last minute, keeping Hall from get, being able to get back into the play and affect the shot. Four-point lead. Again, as both teams become more cautious, you end up playing against the set defense and you don't get easy shots. Watson with a tough angle. Person gets the rebound. Auburn looking for their first SEC win of the year. Boy, does Wesley Person look comfortable handling the basketball in the open court? He could be a point guard easily. Gary Rich whistled for the reach-in. Looked like he had a good chance to get a jump ball out of that, and that's what he still thinks. He thinks that was a jump. Well, look at it again. You be the judge. Little hand checking, but he's got his hand on the basketball. I think he's got a good gripe there. South Carolina in foul trouble. Hill with four, Wilson with four, Rich with four. I should say Hall with four. Allen's <laughs> an 82% free throw shooter. We waited till after the shot, so we wouldn't jinx him, but he still missed. Less so. And this time they get Aubrey Wiley for the foul after the shot. He got Emmett Hall earlier and got away with it, but this one was right out in front of everybody. The other one was in the corner. Wiley's second. Lesso's a solid free throw shooter, 78.6% coming into this game. It never fails. Newton's team shooting 66% from the line. <laughs> Approaching the four-minute mark. Watson helps the turnover. Watson at the other end. Nice pass by Wade Franklin to make that possible. But excellent defense by South Carolina to knock the ball loose. And look at him and Hall on the baseline. Jamie Watson in the right place at the right time again, and Auburn has to talk about it. 3.42 to go. Every time we get ready to write them off, they come back. That's Alice and her husband. I can't believe you have a married granddaughter. You can't. Pretty. That's their new house. Oh, they must be doing well. They are. But I helped him a bit. About eight, nine years ago, I set up funds for all three grandchildren. Oh, that's a nice idea. Actually, it was my man at Payne Weber. He thought I should start setting aside money back then. How do you know about your grandchildren? He asked. This week, Russ Beeler's in-laws came to Lake Edna, and how better to feed a group like this than the KFC Super Value Buckets? 15 pieces of the Colonel's original recipe, just $9.99, and super-sized buckets of zesty hot wing pieces, also $9.99. Super Value Buckets are here for a limited time. And thankfully, so are my in-laws. The KFC Super Value Buckets. We are KFC, we do chicken right. At State College, Purdue had pulled ahead by seven. The Lions trying to claw back Elton Carter. Converts underneath. Penn State back within three, a minute and a half to go. Let's go back to our tie ball game. The Gamecocks have come back. Four quick points. 
Inside four minutes to play, and Steve Newton's club has done it with defense, in particular, Jamie Watson. Well, a coach's life is tough, and you, know, you feel like Auburn has the basketball with a four-point lead with four minutes to play. They're in pretty good shape, and all of a sudden, the game is even in less than 10 seconds. Who's on the glass again? Aubrey Wiley having a tremendous game and coming up with the big plays for this young Auburn team. Watson looking into Hall. Finer. Look at the other end. And they make him pay again. Ronnie Battle. Find him again. They're going to get the reach in. South Carolina is having trouble maintaining defensive floor balance, and even when they're back, they again tend to pick up their men too early rather than protecting the basket and then finding their men. And part of that is defending the three-point shot has become such a factor today, and when you've got a guy like Wesley Person out there, you have to look around and find him, and you have to worry about defending him farther out on the perimeter, so it's hard to protect the basket. Find him at the line. South Carolina is sending everybody to the glass, too, so... Tommy Joe Eagles just telling his team, look, release, have one or two guys, and that's what they're doing. Bynum misses the first, a chance to draw his team to within three, because we're under three minutes to go. Right now, South Carolina without either Ridge or Haskins in the game, which means they don't have a point guard who's the one usually thinking about staying back on defense, and of course, here comes Kerry Ridge for that very reason. battle and Wiley again well, if he could get assist off missed shots uh, Ronnie battle would be having a good game because Aubrey Wiley has saved him several times today Watson tough shot and it goes He's at that end of the floor Jamie Watson is the one who's stepping forward for South Carolina he's made some big baskets and some tough plays and that's the nice thing about a player like Jamie Watson. He can make the tough plays look easy. Look at him hanging in the air. And that's the kind of potential South Carolina envisioned when they recruited this young man from Elm City, North Carolina, Wilson Park High School. He's got 15 in the second half. They're going to get Franklin with the foul on battle. Battle's a good free throw shooter again, so he's not the one. South Carolina is not putting him at the free throw line intentionally at this point of the game. Reminder that our wall-to-wall -wall basketball continues, of course, with Big Monday in the Big East, Georgetown and UConn, Big A, Kansas and K-State, and Big West, Long Beach State, and UC Santa Barbara. Battle makes them both. Auburn keeping the defensive pressure on South Carolina, even with a four-point lead. Emmett Hall to Emmett Wilson. Great inside passing, heads-up play by Emmett Hall. Aubrey Wiley seems to be everywhere, even helping bring the ball up against the press. I don't think Battle cares what time it is on the clock. He looks to take it every time. Another great pass. 
Well, the steal at the far end of the floor, too, and then being able to take it the length of the floor and make the play for the basket to tie the game. South Carolina has forced 10 turnovers here in the second half, scoring 12 points off those 10 turnovers. And we're headed to the minute mark. Good offense by Auburn. They knew what they were looking for. The guy that's done the job all day long, Aubrey Wiley, and they go to him and he delivers. Aubrey Wiley coming to an arena near you in the SEC. He's got 24. He came in averaging five. Rich with the leaner. Swinson controls it. And Auburn doesn't have to take a shot here. They're going to hang on to the basketball. Franklin with the foul on battle. Tommy Joe Eagles has been in this situation before. They've had the lead in the second half of all three SEC games. They've lost all three. They're leading by two with 22 seconds to go as both teams want to talk things over. Well, a good timeout by Steve Newton there. He wants to tell his team exactly what's going to happen during these 22 seconds, go over all the different score situations that they might have after these free throws, make or miss. We gave you Big Monday. We have to give you Super Tuesday. Glenn Robinson didn't play last year. He is playing this year. Indiana and Purdue. That's Tuesday at 7.30. Followed at 9 Eastern. And it'll be Kentucky and Alabama. Roderick Rhodes, the star freshman, 9.30 Eastern for Super Tuesday. All right, Coach, what do you do? What are you telling your team right now if you're Steve Newton? Well, Steve Newton, again, is going over all the different clock situations. If we're down by two, what he wants his team to do, if Battle were to miss the free throws, or if Battle makes the free throws and they're behind either by three or four, he's telling them the different situations, the kind of shots he wants them to look for as the clock runs down and how many timeouts are left, et cetera, et cetera. So he's covering every possible situation, just as Tommy Joe Eagles is doing at the other end of the floor. We talked about Purdue coming up on Super Tuesday. They were a winner today. Have you seen Glenn Robinson play? He's fantastic. Uh, he's, he's made a believer out of everyone. And, of course, sitting out last year doesn't seem to have hurt him at all. He came out of high school. Him and Chris Weber were considered the two top players. Weber, of course, you know all about. And Glenn Robinson starting to make his legend and presence felt. Wiley is 9 of 14, 5 of 8 from the line, 24 points, 7 boards. But Battle is the man on the spotlight right now. Three-point lead. Doesn't look like he felt the pressure on that one, and he is a good free-throw shooter, so he's the type of player you want up there at this stage of the game. Go for the three or take the two? Two possessions, you got to go for the two. Get it in the basket. They'll call the timeout with 10 seconds to go down by two. Well, at this stage, you're thinking only 10 seconds to play. We've got to come up with a steal on the inbounds. If not, we have to foul right away so that we have some maneuvering, and you've got to hope they miss at least one of the free throws at the other end of the floor. Coming up at the top of the hour, it's the Senior Bowl from Mobile, Alabama. Elvis Gerbach, Derek Lassick, Audrey Ismail. That's right after this game. Coming up tonight, the wall-to-wall -to -wall hoops continue. Adonis Jordan and the Kansas Jayhawks against the Louisville Cardinals, unranked but definitely dangerous when they're at home. Auburn with two timeouts left. South Carolina has used their last one. Well, they're going to have to stop the clock by fouling here if the ball does get inbounds. But, of course, what they want to come up with right now is either a five-second violation or a steal on the inbounds pass. Both teams in the bonus. If you're looking who to foul, you don't want to foul Person, Gallon, or Wiley. Battles hit some big ones. 
Aaron Clinton, who probably won't handle the ball, is their worst free throw shooter of the five on the floor right now. Well, particularly at this stage of the game, with as little time as there is left, you can't be choosy. Whoever the ball is inbounded to has to be fouled. You have to trap him, try to come up with a steal, make it look good, but don't let it come out of the trap right there. And they end up with a foul. Well, Tommy Joe Eagles sent Swinson long so he wouldn't be handling the basketball. He wanted Battle to handle it. He's the senior. He's the guy you want at the line. Now, of course, the problem for South Carolina here is that even if they can score at the other end of the floor, they can't stop the clock again. Only one second left the clock. Well, if Battle makes this one, all they have to do is play solid defense, let the ball go in the goal, and that's what Tommy Joe Eagles is going to tell his team. Look, guys, if this one goes in, we cannot lose. Just take the ball out of bounds and let the clock run out. Battle has hit eight of his last nine free throws, giving Auburn the three-point lead. See Tommy Joe checking everything there. His assistant, are you sure they have no timeouts left and they can't stop the clock? He's asking because he wants to make sure before he tells his team what to do here. Auburn has protected the basketball here in the second half. They almost let it slip away, but they did that in the three SEC losses, including the one at Florida, and they don't even want to talk about that Florida game because that one hurt because they should have won that game. Well, of course, that was a home game, and it was right there for them to take. Today, they're on the road, and I think Tommy Joe Eagles has to feel very good about his basketball team because they could have folded several times in the second half. South Carolina, a great job of coming back. Pressure defense all over the court, really creating some problems for Auburn. They could have gotten their heads down. They didn't. They got their heads up. They took advantage of South Carolina's inability to get back and protect the basket, to get some easy baskets and retake the lead, and now they seem to be in control of the game. Well, they need some momentum. They will host Tennessee Wednesday. Then they're at Arkansas, at Alabama. Well, there's no easy road in the SEC. That's a very tough conference, and you've got to play well every time you take the court. Battle with 19. Eight of nine from the line. 14 of his points in the second half. And again, let's give some credit to Aubrey Wiley for what he's done for this Auburn team today. You're right. He has become a force in the Southeastern Conference. This one is over, folks. South Carolina, down by as many as nine, couldn't hang on to win it. And give credit to Tommy Joe Eagles. His team, nip and tuck, and pulls out the victory. Their first SEC victory of the year. Their first road win in the SEC in nine tries. For Terry Holland, I'm Dan Patrick. Your final score, Auburn by two. Now to Chris Fowler. All right, Dan, thank you. Got two words for you. About time from an Auburn point of view. This the breakthrough they've been looking for in the conference. Now a reminder, the Senior Bowl, Mobile, Alabama, Chance for college football players to impress NFL scouts coming up in just a couple minutes. Then college.